dry covenant. After the earth was destroyed in the flood, God said to himself, I will no longer destroy man. He, he decided not to destroy man again because of his sin. He said, therefore, he will cut a covenant with man to preserve him. And so God entered the covenant of preservation with man. You'll find that scripture in Genesis chapter 9 from verse 1 to 17. I, I gave you all the scriptures so you can revert to the next class. I'm just giving context to what I want to share tonight. Praise God. So there was covenant of exemption. And I said the way that covenant is activated is by sowing and reaping. Genesis 8, 20 to 22. Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat, summer and winter shall not cease as far as the earth remaineth. And I said the token of that covenant is the rainbow. Genesis 9, verse 12 and 13. So every time you see the rainbow, know that the earth and everything on earth, not just man, even animals, donkeys, cows, will be preserved. The earth will not be destroyed for man's sake because of that covenant. Now, that is why God intervenes in the affairs of man. When man is in danger, there is now a legality, a legal basis for God to, for God to intervene. Because there is a covenant now that mandates God to intervene in man's situation without violating himself. Then God went further to a superior covenant, which is the covenant of sufficiency. It's not enough to be saved. Your necessities must be met. He now cut a new covenant with Abraham. So in this covenant, God blessed man. God brought man to a point where he's not just blessed, but he becomes the blessing. So Genesis 17, verse 1 to 12, you'll see the details of that covenant, but it was promised in Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3. Get thee out of thy country, get thee out of thy kindred, get thee out of thy father's house, in blessings, I will bless you. Whoever blesses you is blessed. Whoever causes you is cursed. In thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So God decided to bring man into sufficiency. The very word blessed means empower to prosper. So God cut a covenant with man to empower him to prosper regardless of the situation. So on one point, he wanted to protect and preserve man, but he went further to prosper the man. And I said, the way to activate that covenant is by faith and circumcision. Those were the tokens God gave. If you don't believe, you will not have that covenant find expression. And that was why God insisted until Abraham believed. The symbol, of course, circumcision. But God does not just want to provide for man. Because God can provide for man and man will be lawless and sinful. So God went further to a superior covenant. This shows you God's value system. God wants to protect you. But beyond protecting you, God wants to bless you. Beyond blessing you, God wants you to live at his realm by his laws and according to his standard. Because even you who is a man, you can't keep giving money to your son and he's smoking away the whole money. So it's not just about giving him what he needs. It's about who he becomes because of what you are giving him. You can't be giving your son money and it's womanizing with that money. Living recklessly. You say, hey boy, stop there. What's your problem? I'm not providing for you to destroy yourself. So at one point, he must come under government. So God went further from the covenant of sufficiency to the covenant of ethics, value system, and righteousness to prove to man his standard. I have the way I live in my kingdom. And so that was when the covenant he had with Moses was activated. And I said, the way you activate that covenant is by obedience. So if you don't obey God's law, you cannot walk in God's realm. And I said, the symbol of that covenant is the Ten Commandments. That was why God gave his laws. This is my standard. But God didn't stop there. God still went further to a superior covenant, which is the Davidic covenant. And in the Davidic covenant, God wanted man to truly become like him. So that's where God exhorted man to become a king. So God promised David, 2 Samuel, you see that from chapter 7, verse 9 to 12, or to 13 thereabout, where God told David he will make him a king forever and ever. So at this point, God is not protecting man anymore. He's doing something beyond protecting man. He's not just providing for man. He's doing something beyond providing for man. He's not just doing something beyond providing for man. He has also showed man his standard and value system. And ultimately, 
he has made man like himself. So man now has the authority that God has to do what God can do. So now he's a king and he's a priest. So on one side, he has relationship with God because he has been taught the protocol of relationship. And on another side, he has authority to exercise government. Are you following the sequence? So in the Davidic covenant, we were made kings and priests. And I said the way to activate that covenant is by intimacy. When you begin to build intimacy with God, when you begin to draw close to God and demonstrate it through brokenness, you will see that authority will be rising in your life. This is why the Bible said, if you humble yourself, God will exhort you. So kingship is a function of humility and brokenness. So activating that covenant is by brokenness and the token of that covenant is intimacy. But I said all of these four covenants are types and shadows of the real covenant God wants to have with man. So in Jeremiah 31, from verse 31 to 34, God said, I will cut a new covenant with my people. And in this covenant, God began to show us how it will work. Number one, he said his law will be written in our hearts. Number two, he said no man shall teach his brother to know the law. Everybody will know God from his spirit. Number three, he said, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Because the old covenant, the Bible said, they could not keep it. So not one of them was fulfilled. Because in all of these first four covenants, man wanted to keep it by his own ability. But often his ability failed. So even though God is using this covenant to show man his plan, he is also using this covenant to show man that in yourself, you can never be anything. Because on one side, the covenant shows you God's plans. God's plan is to protect you, provide for you, transform you, and make you be like him. God's plan is to show you that he loves you and he wants an intimate relationship with you. So you begin by giving God your resources. You move from trusting God to support you. You move to living according to God's standard. And then you come to a point where God's resources automatically become your resources because now he has gotten your heart. He showed you intimacy. But over and above that, because nobody could keep it, God showed man that the flesh profits nothing. So there was a need for a new covenant. And in this new covenant, God didn't cut the covenant with fallen man anymore. God actually cut the covenant with himself. So what God did was that God became man in the person of Jesus. So Jesus represented the human race. And so God entered into covenant with God. On one side, the father represented the Godhead. On another side, the son represented humanity. So God cut a new covenant with man through himself. And in this covenant, number one, sin was washed away for the first time. Man can be without guilt. Number two, eternal life was given to man. So for the first time, man could live from the economy of the God life. Number three, God now entered inside man to live from within man. So man no longer functioned by his own ability, but the ability of God that is in him. And then number four, man becomes part and parcel of God's family and God's program on the earth. Because indeed, he is now a king. This is God's plan. And this is what God achieved in Christ Jesus. But I said, as simple as this thing is, it is when you start living out your Christian life that you will know whether you understand this covenant. Because it is in your Christian life that the actual precision and accuracy in understanding is revealed.